Hey everyone, wanted to go over a, a quick watch review. Um, haven't seen too many people cover this watch. Um, I think it's um, lesser known, but nonetheless, I think it's one of the best bang per buck watch you can find. Uh, this is the Mito Baroncelli Heritage. Uh, I think it lists for around either $900 or $1,000, but um, you can probably find it for a little bit cheaper. I know I paid um, way under retail. You can buy it at Macy's if you want, right? Um, so here's the box it comes with. Nice, to, just a nice little box, good presentation. And this is the rose gold variant. It's uh, stainless steel. Otherwise this watch would be <laughs> extremely expensive. Here's the watch. Has a uh, 39 millimeter case diameter. Um, it's seven millimeters thin. It is an extremely thin watch, so you can easily uh, slip this under the cuff. Uh, you have a signed crown. Let's go back to that dial. So it is, I wouldn't say pure white, it's like an off-white dial. Um, I'm gonna zoom in here. So the hands are very interesting. I love this detail here. So as you can see, half of the uh, sword hand there is kind of this brushed effect where the other half is this polished. So when you, it plays with the light very nicely there. Great attention to detail. Uh, you have a blued second hand. Um, I think that might be real bluing. I don't think that's paint. Um, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if you know, but uh, definitely nice blued second hands. Um, you have a printed dial, all the indices and all the text is all uh, print. And it is a little hard to show on camera, but it is a textured dial, almost like an eggshell kind of texture. So, you, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to pick up, but it's definitely not a flat off-white dial. There's a little bit of grain to it. Uh, like I said, this is the rose coal, uh, gold variation. Um, I have another rose gold piece that's stainless steel, but um, this is a Steinhardt homage to, well, I think the Outmaster maybe, I don't know, I can't keep up, but this is their uh, rose gold, it's a little more, I don't even know, maybe more, like I think this is a little more muted, this color, but this is a little more in your face, but um, yeah, let me do a side profile maybe, so you can compare the um, the two colors there, but enough about this watch. I, I may do a review on this one day. Um, yeah, so this has a Mito 1192 movement in it. Um, it's based off of the Eta 2892A2 movement. I'm really not sure what they did to it. It's basically an Eta 2892. I don't think they really did much. Huh? <laughs> but it's a... Um, you know, eight beat per second, four hertz movement, so you get that uh, smoother second hand going around the dial here. Um, I guess let me show you the uh, the movement. It is a see-through case back. Um, quite nicely done, I must say. Uh, I think they have what they call that perlage finishing on the uh, bridge here, and they, I think that might be called the Geneva striping. I could be totally wrong. I haven't been keeping up with my watch terminology for uh, many years at this point, but... Um, yeah, they did a good job though, you know? I mean, for what I paid for this, I think I paid, I don't know, 600 maybe. Um, for a watch that has this kind of finishing and a top grade at a movement, it's hard to beat. You have your blued screws. I mean, they did a really nice job. So, let me see if I can actually zoom in here. Let's see if I can wipe off the smudges if I can. Uh, yeah, very nice. I'll show you the other side. Very nice. So, uh, this is not the original watch strap that it comes with. It actually comes with this black um, leather alligator strap. Um, it's all right. It's not the greatest quality. Um, You'll probably going to want to switch it out if you do end up getting this. I mean, it's not the greatest strap in the world. I mean, but I mean, at this price point, you can't even be mad. Like, <laughs> it's a great price point. Um, it is a signed buckle, which is a nice touch at least. Um, this is a 20 millimeter. So all your 20, mil mil uh, 20 millimeter 
straps will fit this watch. Uh, this one tapers down to an 18 at the buckle. So, but I wanted a brown, a little more casual type of leather. So, yeah. I guess, um, let me try it on. Uh, I'm wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Longines Sector Dial uh, Heritage Classic. So let me take this off and let me show you how it wears. I may do a review on this watch too one day. This is a beautiful, simple watch, but I love it. But um, all right, let me put this on. So I have a seven inch wrist, so keep that in mind. <laughs> I mean, it fills out my wrist perfectly. I mean, it's a little large for a dress watch, but uh, and any larger, I think it would be too much. But at 39 millimeters, I think uh, this is the cutoff. This is the largest I would go. But again, what I want to emphasize, look how thin that is. That is just ridiculous, you know. Um, and for an automatic movement, you know, you can't usually get this uh, this type of thinness in, unless you go for like a manual wind. But um, this is an automatic, you know. And I uh, forgot to mention, this is um, a hand-winding crown as well. You can hand-wind it. Um, it has hacking, so you can stop the second hand and then, you know, change your date. But, yeah. Very, uh, very beautiful watch. Um, for a comparison, I have a 36 millimeter watch, just so you can see how that looks. Just bear with me. It's my uh, one of my first watches, so this is what a Black Bay 36 mil looks like on my wrist. I mean, I feel like this is a chunky watch now after wearing the Mito. <laughs> but um, let's see if I can just display the uh, differences here. So. Not too much bigger, but it's definitely a, um, a bigger watch. So, I just love when the light hits that second hand is perfectly, get that blue, blue just pops out at you. It's kind of like a, <laughs> this long jeans here. Let me look at that. Ooh. Again, I may make a video on this for another day, but um, for now. I can't be happier. I mean, it's a great watch for the price. You can't, I don't think you can get much better for a uh, Swiss dress watch without going into like the uber expensive range, like a JLC or a Patek, right? So, they're, uh, I think they, they hit a home run with the, um, the value here. Again, I just love that those sword hands and that detail oh uh, here's a good view of the uh, dial so that's that's what it looks like this kind of this eggshell textured dial but that polish on the hands and the brushed it's a very very nice watch um oh forgot to mention this is a sapphire crystal um it has ar coating on the front and the back of the crystal which is very, very nice. But yeah. Very, uh, very nice watch. Well, uh, if you have any questions, you can leave in the comments. I'll monitor them from, from time to time and try to answer them. Huh, I guess it is a 21 jewel. I'm just noticing that now. But, oh, yep, like I said, any questions, let me know. Hopefully this gives you an idea of uh, what the watch looks like and how it wears. And yeah, I would encourage everyone, <laughs> go to your stores, tr try it on. It's nice. Very, uh, very beautiful watch from a brand that's not that uh, common, at least in the watch community world here. I mean, I haven't really heard of Mito before I found this watch. So this is a good entryway to the brand. And they, they have other models too. Uh, they have a stainless steel one that's silver, so you don't have to go for this rose gold if you don't want to. And they may have an actual normal yellow gold, but I can't remember. It's been a while. <laughs> so, yeah.
All right, thanks for watching, and uh, see you on the next one.